Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Daily Antidote of Song. We are in the month where we are going to hit our 450th day of being in this room together, singing, making friends all across the nation and beyond into other countries. What an amazing thing to see all of your faces again today. I've missed saying hello to you all of these last days. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all. Hello, hello to everybody out there on Facebook Live and hello to everybody in this room. Today is day one of our Library of Congress American Folklife Center Archive Challenge Week, where we're gonna be hosted all week by Jennifer Cutting and Stephen Winnick. So happy to have them in the room. It's always fun when they're around and always an amazing learning lesson. Hello to everybody. Hi, Jeff, we're glad you're here with us today and we can't wait to sing with you. Hi, Katie, thanks for being here and running the tech. And hello, of course, to Steve and Jen. We're really glad that you guys are here. Kathy B. On the background music. Woohoo! I love it. Thank you, Kathy. Hello to Delhi in Maryland. Hello, Aloysius in Massachusetts. Hello, Dane. Nice to have you with us again today. Or Danny. Hello, Busy Graham, Carpe Diem Marks. Glad you're here. Hello, Mabel and a Cinnamon Bear. Nice to see you coming in from Mass. Hello, Dan in Vienna, Virginia. Nice to see you. Hello, Hoda. Nice to have you with us again today. Good to see your smiling face. Hello, Al. Glad you're here. Who was that? Betsy. Hi, Betsy from Washington Rebels. Glad to see you. And Susan in Ohio. Hello. And Kim in Vancouver. Let's take a breath and we'll hear Kathy for a second. there was a way to play both of us exactly at the same time. Hi, Kate in Charlottesville. Hello, Arlene in California. Hello, Christiana and Bob in Rockville. And Archie and Hindi in Toronto. Hello, glad you guys are here. Hi, Annette in California. Hello, Sheila in Florida. Hi, Kathy in Virginia. Glad to see your smiling face too. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you today coming in from Maryland or DC. Hello to Doug coming in from Vermont. Hello to Peter and Janet coming in from Toronto and Bonnie in Idaho and Jamie in Victoria. Carolyn in Idaho, hello with a rainbow square. That's very groovy, how did you do that? Hi Anne in Maryland and Luda in British Columbia and Nancy's Irish cow in Washington. Lynn in Connecticut, Tom in Victoria, Fred from the DC Labor Chorus. Hello Pat coming in from Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm not sure if you're new to us today. Hello, welcome and we are glad you are here. Hello, Carol in Connecticut, Harriet in Chicago. Hello, Angie, also not sure if you're new to us. No, I recognize you. Hi, nice to see you again. And Sid, nice to have you with us today. Thanks for being here. And some more folks. Oh, hello, Barbara, glad you're with us today. Nice to see you. And folks who are off video today, Mommy uh, in New Jersey and Gary and Susan in Seattle and Marsha, Adrian, Martha, Sandra, Ruth, Gwyn. Thomasina in New York, Sarah, and folks still coming into the room. Kevin, glad to have you back with us today. Wow, it's a great crowd. Let's all now really take a deep breath and listen to Kathy. Thank you, Kathy B. <clears throat> what a beautiful day. It's Monday. Let's all give it up for Monday. And it's the start of a beautiful week. I am so excited to turn my hosting powers over to the fabulous Steve Winnick and Jennifer Cutting from the Library of Congress American Folklife Center. Hey gang, you are up. All right, thank you so much, Joe. I'm Jennifer Cutting and this is my colleague, Stephen Winnick. Hi. And we are both folklife specialists at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. And we are just now starting this week as our fourth Archive Challenge Partnership Week in the Daily Antidote of Song. So thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful, long summer solstice day. Steve and I are wearing our yellows and reds and oranges to celebrate this summer solstice. And Steve and I just love and we feel so fortunate also to work in the largest folklore archive in the United States and one of the largest, in fact, in the whole world. And a tiny bit of history, not to bore you, but just to let you know that our archive dates all the way back to the year 1928. Uh, that's when it was founded and it contains field recordings of all the people you have heard of, those famous performers like Muddy Waters and Pete Seeger and Lead Belly, Woody Guthrie, Gene Ritchie, Aunt Molly Jackson, 
and you know just thousands more amazing tradition bears that you have never heard of and whose names you don't know and in fact whose names sometimes we don't even know because they were never written down yeah i'll mention that our archive although the archive goes back to 1928 the recordings go back further and they include the earliest ethnographic recordings that we know of in the world, which are of Passamaquoddy Indians in Maine. Um, so we have a lot of Native American recordings that go back to before 1928 into the late 19th century on wax cylinders. Yes, and not only do we have Native American music all the way up to the music of the most recently arrived immigrant groups in the United States, but we have thousands of recordings of working people, ordinary working people like ourselves, uh, but people with extraordinary things to say and sing and play, things that form our unwritten history, which is every bit as important as our written history. So um, in 2015, we had the idea of taking something that had already been going on since 1928, but kind of having an intentionality about it and giving it a name. So we invited a set of artists to research our collections and find songs and tunes that really inspired them and then arrange and interpret it, kind of put their own stamp on it. Uh, and we called it the Archive Challenge. And that showcase at the 2015 Folk Alliance Conference was so successful that we've been running archive challenges ever since, both at the Folk Alliance Conference at the Library of Congress and later during the pandemic and afterward from home. Uh, more on the stay at home archive challenge a little later. We'll tell you a little more about that. But first we're gonna tell you a little bit about today's guest. <clears throat> uh, Jeff Warner has a long and multi-generational family connection with our archive. Um, he got his start as a musician backing up his musician and folklorist father, Frank Warner, on his recordings and performances. And he's been a renowned performing musician for over 50 years. Um, Frank Warner and his uh, wife, Jeff's mother, Ann Warner, uh, were important collectors who went all over the country and collected a vast uh, collection of field recordings. And uh, the Ann and Frank Warner collection is one of the great treasures in the American Folklife Center archive. It contains a wealth of material uh, collected by the Warners from 1938 to 1966 as they traveled through all of the country. And it contains really important recordings that have become the basis of some of our folk revival. So for example, they have the recording of uh, Frank Prophet's uh, version of Tom Dooley, which became the basis of the Kingston Trio's version that won the Grammy for, uh, for uh, the first Grammy that there was for country and Western performance in 1959 and sparked the folk boom in 1958 when it was released. So that's just one recording. And the likelihood is if you look at all of the ways in which they might've heard that song, that they, they saw a, uh, a transcription of it certainly in one of the Lomax's books, but they also quite possibly heard Frank Warner play it at some point, um, and that may be where they picked it up. So that's kind of kind of fun too. Um, but I should say that, um, that the last time we saw Jeff in person, uh, he and his brother Garrett came to the Library of Congress to do uh, a presentation called From the Mountains to the Sea, uh, which was a multimedia presentation on the collecting work of their parents, Anne and Frank Warner. And it's a great uh, presentation, which is now online at the Library of Congress website. So you can look for that when we're done here. Um, and so Jeff can tell us way more about Ann and Frank Warner and about the song that he's going to sing today. And so we are now going to turn it over to our good friend and uh, our, our honored guest today, Jeff Warner. Jennifer, Steve, hello after so long a time. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Three solstice! Years. Happy solstice, yes. Jeff. Yes. Yeah. What a what a how great that uh, I had the opportunity to be born into that family, and that I didn't throw it over for rock and roll when I was. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! I'm so glad. Now it's been it's been wonderful uh, to be able to work with the career work of my folks, and to help my mother. She published a book of their story in 1984 for Syracuse University Press. 
and Warner traditional American folk songs from the Frank and Ann Warner collection, which is still out there. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, so many pictures and stories about the traditional singers. Tim Erickson, a great singer of old songs as well as rock, uh, once said of my parents that they collected people first and songs second. And I think that was a, a moving and telling observation. Um, my father was a southerner, came out of Alabama and North Carolina, and my mother was a Midwesterner from St. Louis. They met in New York City, so I'm a New York City kid. But they all had day jobs. My father was a YMCA executive. They took their vacation time to do the song collecting and somehow amassed a thousand songs, which are now at the archive. Woo. It's a great honor to be part of that tradition and to be able to sing so many of the songs that they found. This is, a, my father was a very interesting singer. As in, in matter of fact, one of the first, I think, to be interested in conveying the style of the singer that he was reporting on. I mean, um, really up until the New Lost City Ramblers came out and started replicating the sound of country bands in 1958, Mostly if people sang folk songs, they learned the song and then sang them in a middle class way in a city. And many songs were conveyed that way and they were beautiful. But to have a sense of style, my father did that because he was always reporting on the people from whom he'd heard the songs. Uh, so he did a talk at the McDowell Colony in 1940. And somebody there said, you know, there's a woman lives right down the road who knows a lot of these old songs. Her name is Mrs. Fish. And my father, who was not shy, they <laughs> walked up to her house and knocked on the door and said, we hear you like old songs. And my mother said, Lena Bourne Fish was so excited to find somebody who cared about her old songs that she brought them into the house, took the phone off the hook, shooed the grandkids out of the house and started singing and was not to be stopped. So in two long weekends in 40 and 41, 43, they got a hundred songs. And this is one of them. I'm gonna play my English concertina. For those of you in the know, this is a baritone concertina, nice low notes. So one of the songs, uh, when my folks met Lena Bourne Fish, they hadn't yet, they were amateurs not professional folklorists. There were hardly any at the time in 40. Uh, they didn't know enough to ask about provenance, to know, so where did you learn these songs? Where'd they come from? They felt bad about that later, so we don't know. But we do know that Lena Bourne Fish's um, uncle was a sailor, and he sang many songs to her, and a lot of her songs were about the sea and sailors, including this one which we've not found any place else. I'll sing a little bit. The chorus says, but the girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high and westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay. I'll do a verse and a chorus and then we'll go over the chorus a little bit. Of all the harbors, east or west, there is one port that I love best. Whichever way the wind doth blow, we'll steer for the bonny bay of Biscay. The girl I love is awaiting there, with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high, westward ho. But return to the bonny bay of Biscay, oh. The chorus says, For the girl I love is awaiting there With her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high and westward ho, But return to the bonny bay of Biscay, oh. Not easy to pick up right away, so if we're good, we have the text of that 
that we might be able to show to you as I'm singing this song. But unless you all have uh, questions up front, why don't we just light into it, do the song, and then we can discuss it as we will. And I'll just mention that the text is in the chat, so you can look at it right now. Ah, good, good. East or West, there is one port that I love best. Whichever way the wind doth blow, I'll steer for the bonny bay of Biscay. A girl I love is awaiting there, with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high and westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay. -o. Night in my hammock, I will sleep while we sail upon the briny deep. Oh, tempest rage, and wild winds blow, I'll dream of the bonny bay of Biscay. Oh, the girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high. Westward hope, but return to the bonny bay of this One more year I will settle down with my bride in this free seaport town. Sweeter and dearer by far I know than the winds of the bonny bay of Biscay. Oh, the girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high and westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay. Do it again. The girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high, westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay. I assume that that was an English song to begin with, and I've never found it any other place. So we've been looking, uh, but we haven't found it. So it may be unique to Lena Born Fish, and otherwise lost in tradition, can't tell. And it's such I, a sweet, lovely little song about the Bay of Biscayo, but the Bay of Biscayo is north of Spain and it's extremely turbulent water. Lots and lots of songs about people being lost in storms on the Bay of Biscay. So it's nice to have a cheerful song about the Bay of Biscay. I agree, right. <laughs> and, right. and actually the way you took the melody of the song and turned it into a little, a uh, jig tune was really fun. I enjoyed oh, that in particular. I guess I did, didn't I? <laughs> you did, and you did a wonderful job of it. That would be just delightful as a tune on its own, but then the, the fact that there's a great song that goes with it too. You gave us a tune and a song, thank you. Mm -hmm. So what led you to choose that particular one to teach us today, apart from the fact that yes, it has a wonderful, fabulous chorus? Well, I've been a resident of New Hampshire for the past 20 years after being a New York City kid and living in Washington, D.C. for a long time. Uh, so I've lived here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for 20 years. So I definitely wanted to go to Lena Bourne Fish as my informant uh, because now I've, I'm doing programs on her work for the New Hampshire Humanities around uh -huh. the state. Uh, but also because I didn't know any other versions anywhere. So throwing it out there said, if there's something like that, write me, you know, write you. Okay. So we can, we can find out uh, if there's any other history to it. Sounds great. Well, also I'll, it's a nice song. It's got a great tune, doesn't it? Great tune. And great words. Great chorus. Yeah. yeah. And as you said, there's a lot of other songs about the Bay of Biscay, but they're not this song. <laughs> And they're not happy generally, they're sad and or tragic. So it's kind of cool to have a, a sort of cute, happy song about the Bay of Biscay. 
And I'll, so as, since you brought up Mrs. Fish in New Hampshire, I will mention that, um, you know, there's other songs within the tradition that primarily come from Mrs. Fish's renditions of them. And one of them is, you know, um, Get Up Jack John, Sit Down, otherwise known as the Jolly Roving Tar, right. which is an old theater song, but Mrs. Fish added the the Jolly Roving Tar chorus to it or someone in her lineage that she learned it from. Um, so it's never been collected in that way except from Mrs. Fish. And now that's the way everyone on the maritime music scene sings it. So I've been in sea shanty groups and we sing that song as Mrs. Fish did. So it comes clearly from the Warner's collection um, Thanks for of pointing Mrs. That Fish. Out. It's true. This and is there, now a general song. Yes. And I'll mention another one that because later in the week we're going to have the Walloping Window Blind in this week, uh, Deborah Cowan has picked that song tomorrow. to do tomorrow. Yep. So, so we're going to have another Lena Bourne Fish song uh, coming up later on in the week. So that should be fun as well. So, um, yeah. So we what actually did, have what some. What did she look like? We have some photos of Mrs. Fish, which we could show uh, to people if we can share those. There she is with a recording device. That's kind of cool. By her fireplace. Right. That's the fill code at the back one. That's the fill code device that uh, was made for my parents. My father did an experimental TV show in 1940 in Philadelphia, and uh, they got so interested in his work of collecting that they made a recording machine. And the next year, they had one you could wind up because this one required electricity. Uh -huh. <laughs> you had to find a place in the community where they were that had uh, electricity, but this one, this one needed it. All right, here's some more pictures of Lena Bourne Fish. Here she is at her front door. Yeah, that's what she looked like when Frank knocked on the door that first time, right? right. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> she was, she, interesting history. She was born in 1873 in the Adirondack Mountains. Her father was in the logging trade. Uh -huh. So it, it is entirely possible that a lot of her songs, she didn't leave till she was about 17. Uh -huh. so Maybe that many of her songs are part of the logging sh shanty sing tradition that comes from the northern Adirondacks. From the lumbermen. Uh, then she moved She moved to Jaffrey, New Hampshire, and took a job as working in a, in a home and then married the son of that home and had lots of kids right there in Jaffrey and lived there. So she died in 1945. Her dates are 1873 and 1945. Mm -hmm. So, so I didn't get to meet her. So Jeff, we had a question in the chat. Uh, someone noticed that Mrs. Fish was holding sheets of paper in one of the pictures and wondered whether you know whether she sang from written lyrics or whether she was just sort of refreshing her memory before she sang. She was an avid collector, but she didn't know music. So all of her songs were in her head uh, and not on paper, but her texts were. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thanks so much. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. So, so this is one of our, probably her name isn't as well known as some of the other people in the collection, like Frank Prophet. And yet um, so many songs, which are now just part of our culture and particularly within the folk song movement um, came from her, that it's just, it's nice to talk about her and, and highlight her a little bit today. So. So thank you, Jeff, for bringing that song along. That was fantastic. Yes, and I'll I'll tell you that I play uh, a 1918 Wheatstone Aola McCann duet concertina, <laughs> and I'm going to try my hand at playing this song on that concertina, including the nice little hornpipe that you wrote <laughs> to introduce it. So if you ever hear that... Uh, hornpipe that you made out of Bonnie Biscay, Bonnie Bay of Biscay. Oh, if you ever hear it in an Irish pub, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been teaching it to people, so. Well, you, can um, get a, you can get a lot more notes on your McCann than I can on my Lashinal. That's true, too many <laughs> notes. Uh, that's the problem with it, something like eight octaves, but uh, the size of dinner plates on both sides. But anyway, let's hear more about what you're doing as you emerge from lockdown. 
uh, you mentioned that you were going out west tomorrow. Tell us where you're going and what you're up to and what oh, you're, that's, as you uh, come out of lockdown, what are your plans? Man, it's been a year and a half more, right? Since a yeah. live show. I got to do my first live show last weekend for, who knew, the 75th birthday party of uh, Sturbridge Village Museum in Massachusetts. Wow. I didn't know until they asked me to come and help celebrate. So I did lots of these old songs right out there on the lawn, in situ, in the time. It's quite wonderful. Wow. Uh, I'm headed out to Montana, but that's personal. It's a, a new relationship that started again after 50 years where we knew each other as young people and now we've uh, rediscovered so that's that's fun i know it's <laughs> really wonderful that's out in the uh, near uh, glacier national park so you share a lot of history and that's a great foundation so correct uh and so what's happening uh first i've finally become zoom competent to be able to do <laughs> zoom shows <laughs> and we're glad i was it's funny and I was intimidated at first because of no interaction. But then I realized I have done so many concerts in my life for so few people, it really wasn't any different. So I could just <laughs> go right ahead and continue on what I was doing and now I'm accustomed to it. So I've been able to do even like folk clubs in the UK. On wow. Zoom. It's wonderful. Um, but what were my brother Garrett in Chapel Hill and I, what we're looking forward to is being able to take the next step with the Frank and Ann Warner show, the, the From the Mountains to the Sea, because when we were developing it about eight years ago, we did a, a show in Durham, North Carolina, and the Arts Council, the North Carolina Arts Council saw it, and they've commissioned us to do a North Carolina version of that show, which we did. Wonderful. And we got to show we got to show in on the Outer Banks of North Carolina in October of, uh, of 18. And we were about to market it through the state through the help of the North Carolina Arts Council, and we got cut off short. So picking that up when we can to get to take the Warner songs of North Carolina through the state is the big dream. Oh, that's going to be fabulous. And I, I think the audiences are going to love that link to the past. And what's was, nice yeah. about the show is so rich. It's uh, the images and the sound and the live performances. It's, it's just a great combination of modes. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did the show in Wanchis, North Carolina on the Outer Banks, uh -huh. which is where our folks got a lot of songs in the early 40s from the Tillett family and from others there too. Mm -hmm. And we had about 150 people there. And I tell you, maybe 20% of them were relatives of the people oh. from whom our folks had gotten songs. It was That's a wonderful amazing. time of hugging and reuniting yes. and acquainting some of these people for the first time with their ancestors' music. Yes, giving them back some of their own history. What could be a better job? That's one of the things we love so much about working in the archive, too, is a lot of the time people know that their ancestors sang, but they either didn't realize there were recordings or they just knew those recordings were off somewhere. And when we're actually able to serve people the recordings of their own grandparents or great uncles or however it is in the family, grandparents. It's, yeah. it's just an amazing uh, opportunity. And you have the added uh, part of, of bringing those songs back to life with new performances, which is wonderful as well, which we sometimes do also. But that's what this Daily Antidote uh, Week is about, is about doing these archive challenges. Um, and so we're really grateful to you, Jeff, for bringing that song and for teaching it to us and for telling us so much about it as well. Um, thank you so much for for, for all that you do with the Warner Collection and in your own work. It's just wonderful to have you here. And we want to encourage people to go to Jeff's website. It's www.jeffwarner.com, just J-E-F-F-W-A-R-N-E-R.com. And I can't see the chat window. Yep, Is that going? Yep. Yeah, somebody <laughs> popped it into the chat. Thank you, Katie. 
And um, we just wanted to also tell you a little bit about the Stay at Home Archive Challenge, because we hope that even though you're able to get out and about a little bit more now, we're going to keep on inviting people to interpret songs from our archive. You could even learn this one that Jeff just taught us today and just take a little video of yourself playing it on whatever you play or singing it a cappella, and submit it to our stay at home archive challenge submit your own video yeah so the the link is um is there in the chat but essentially the process is just that you make a video or it could be an audio recording of yourself on soundcloud or something you post it somewhere where people can find the link and then uh you share it out to your social media um, and you send us a notification at the folk life center that you've done it and uh, in some cases, we will share it out on our social media. So um, the the just instructions for how to do that are in the chat. You can find that. It's called uh, spending a lot of time at home. Take the archive challenge. That's what we called it way back when the <laughs> pandemic began and we realized people were unable to get out as much. And you know, some of you might feel a little bit like I do, which is I kind of enjoyed spending a lot of time at home. And now that the <laughs> pandemic is... Uh, about to be over, I might still choose to spend a lot of time at home just because I'm a homebody and I like it. And so. we did want to mention one other thing for people who like to sing but are also spending a lot of time at home, which is the Community Sing Tonight, the Carpe Diem Arts, the same organization that's running the Daily Antidote here, is running a Community Sing tonight at 6.30. Um, there will be a link for that in the chat. That's going to be a great time. Dan and Claudia Zanes are going to be there. Jennifer and I will be there, and lots of other uh, great singers and performers will be there. And we'll, um, be doing so a, we'll be doing a shanty, which we call the Sun Shanty, to the tune of General Taylor, and but it's, it's for the work of calling the sun. It's a solstice song that Jennifer wrote. Song. So, yeah. Yeah, yes. so that'll be our contribution, but we're going to have a lot of fun with that tonight. So come on by again uh, to Carpe Diem and hear the community sing or participate in the community sing tonight. And before we go, we want to give everyone out there a chance to ask Jeff any questions you have about his parents' work, his work, his career, anything about the song today or his performance uh, so we're going to look at the chat box right now and see if any of you have any questions. Yeah, I actually did see one before, Jeff, which was the question was uh, pretty general and it, it asked, was everything unaccompanied? But I think the person meant was, did Lena Bourne Fish sing primarily unaccompanied? Absolutely. She didn't play an instrument. She was a historical wizard. She wrote little articles about the history of her community and got them published in the local newspaper. Uh huh. And kept kept uh, journals and texts of her songs. But she was she an archivist play. herself. Yeah, she was. And uh, and so and then we can mention that throughout the collection there are of course uh, areas of the uh, of the collecting area where people tended to play instruments a lot more, like the North Carolina recordings of people like Frank Prophet who played guitar and banjo. So throughout the collection you find recordings of people who did play instruments, but also a lot of unaccompanied singing by people like Mrs. Fish. I think it's always interesting to point out that uh, really picking up an instrument to sing a song is a kind of a new phenomenon. I mean, you know, people just mm -hmm. sang. They sang behind the plow. They sang with the cradle. They sang to each other and they didn't need a piano. And I mean, as far as we know, guitars weren't even generally available in Anglo tradition until the turn of the century. So people just sang and it's Mrs. Fish is not unusual in that she never attempted to get an instrument, but just sang her songs. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that uh, fuller answer to the to that question. And I'm looking for um, for other questions. We did get a question which is more for us which is where's Figgy? So Figgy the archive cat <laughs> often joins us in these, uh, wow. but he's actually, he's locked outside the door. Sometimes he's a little vociferous, so we don't, we don't always let him in. So, <laughs> so um, I was wondering if we could impose on your good nature, Jeff, to sing that chorus again a couple times, just to keep yeah. it in our heads and let us go on our merry way today with that tune still ringing in our ears. 
great to work with you both again and to meet you, Joe. Thanks for all the help. And the chorus says, for the girl I love, are we in the right key? For the girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. <coughs> it's eastward high and westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay, oh. For oh, the girl I love is awaiting there with her eyes of blue and her golden hair. It's eastward high and westward ho, but return to the bonny bay of Biscay, oh. Bye, you all. Woo! Thank you so much, Jeff. That was amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, I'm going to be singing that song in my head for the rest of the day, that is for sure. It was so catchy. And I actually stuck a note in the chat that said, last week during our Village Harmony Week, uh, the last two days, we sang a song in Georgian, multi-harmony, multi, you know, different language. And then yesterday in South African, and this was such a lovely, simple way to come back down, just to being able to sing with uh, sort of the, the power that comes from feeling confident and knowing something. So I was so grateful for today's beautiful melodic song. Thank you so much for picking it. Jen and Steve, thank you so much for being here today. It was totally amazing. Steve, I was throwing out a question. I don't know if you saw, did you actually mention your blog post that I think was related to today? Um, and if not, I'm now mentioning. So the, the link was, placed in the uh in the chat at some point and it's a blog post that connects the performance of from the mountains to the sea with an interview that i then did with jeff um and so they're both on video and that blog post has got them both uh embedded in there yeah it's so, called homegrown plus yeah so take a look at that if you get a chance and you'll there will be a lot more talking uh with Jeff uh, in that interview, as well as, um, you know, the, the video itself. So happy and driving or flying, whatever you're doing, Jeff. Thank you, ma'am. Wish you a safe trip. And uh, please join us tomorrow at noon Eastern time, Eastern US time for New England ballad singer Deborah Cowan with another great song from the AFC archive. But let's all thank the fabulous Jeff Warner. Jeff Warner, thank you. Woo! And Figgy thanks you. He's finally here. Thank you, Jeff, so much again. Hello, Figgy. So, Jeff, I'm hoping you can actually see all the faces of the folks you've been singing to. Are you on gallery view? Oh. There we go. Always all right, that. now everybody thank Jeff, now that he can see. Thank you. You were not singing to yourself by any means today or even a small audience. There's 50 some odd people in the room today here to celebrate you. So thank you again so much. I am going to uh, remind everybody to join us at tonight's community sing. We are of course gonna have our usual blast. So please join and be there. Um, and to everybody out there on Facebook Live before I say hello, I mean, say goodbye. I will <laughs> say that we are gonna ask uh, Jennifer Cutting to show off her whole outfit after we turn Facebook Live off. So. If you actually want to be in here for that extravaganza, come and join us in the virtual room. <laughs> Thanks again, Facebook. Can't wait to see you tomorrow.